What is up, EOS fans and followers? Today, you're going to get something a little bit different than what you're used to, and it'll be called the EOS Developer Series. Instead of bringing you the latest announcements and DAP news, we're going to dig a little bit deeper in this series into the tools that are making it easier than ever to start developing your own applications on top of EOS IO. Everything EOS is made possible by our series sponsor, Cypherglass. Please support this show by voting for Cypherglass using your favorite block explorer. And also by smashing that like button, subscribing, and by leaving us feedback in the comments below. Welcome everyone to a special edition of Everything EOS. I'm here with Pete K, also known as Bitkenstein, nice. who I spent about a year working with back at ICO Alert. Um, why don't you introduce yourself to the Everything EOS uh, yeah. audience? Man, that was a whole year. I've been on this show before. Uh, Twice. Did you forget? Well, three if you count the episode where you played Ethereum. Oh, right. And yeah. I was the Macho Man, Randy Savage. And I threw Elbow, Slim Jims at you. And Elbow dropped you. <laughs> Won, yeah, won the title times, belt. Good times. So Bitkenstein's been here before. Uh, if you're just uh, learning about this podcast recently, you might not know who he is. Um, why don't you explain your background and who you are? Sure. Yeah. I was a full stack developer at a small business for a number of years. I became a translator, a writer, made content, came to ICO Alert, did a bunch of stuff there, ended up a senior architect there. <laughs> now, Gall and I and our friend Evan, who's, who's off been, camera. Yep. Uh, we've started a, a little bit of a, uh, project that we'll be talking about here soon in the EOS development sphere. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. What, what, are, what are we allowed to say so far? So I don't know, man. So Pete's our, our technical lead on this project. Pete is one of the most cross-functional individuals I've ever met. So, <laughs> um, not, he, he's a, I get my wires crossed a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so let, let's let's go through your skill set. You're a, a master pianist, right? Uh, yeah, I went to. I was going to go to school for classical piano as a performer. I do jazz too, and uh, I had hand problems, so I couldn't practice the like 25 hours a week. Mm -hmm. So you, uh, know, whatever. you speak how many languages? Russian, Ukrainian, and English. Yeah, and English. And you're you're a programmer too. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's what I do now. Yeah. So whenever we were at ICO, like Pete was basically the guy that did everything, and I was one of the people who helped them with technical stuff that I probably uh, shouldn't have been doing. And then we both did content together. So you have your own podcast also. You mm -hmm. want to plug that real quick? Yeah, sure. I got a crypto philosophy podcast. Season two is coming out right now. Uh, fans of this show will probably be most interested in the last episode, which was on uh, UBI and URI, Dan Larimer's ideas about universal resource inheritance. I quote Dan a lot. I think his articles on Medium are underread and, you know, maybe misunderstood. So definitely go check that out. It's about a half hour. We're here uh, for this podcast to explain some of the developer tools uh, that are specific to EOS that uh, Pete's come across. So all these tools <laughs> continuously keep coming out and it just makes things easier. So I, I guess... I'm kind of all over the place here. We should backtrack to when you first started developing on EOS. Yeah, sure. Well, I was interested from the very beginning. Uh, I started learning it, uh, how to develop on EOS in uh, maybe August. Just started poking around, started looking for videos. There's really not that much material out there. There definitely wasn't back then. <laughs> um, I remember right before the San Fran Hackathon when we went to, um, they released like a new update that broke all the code from before oh, if you updated. Oh, my God. And so, um, and you know, it was your choice to upgrade or not, but I figured I'd upgrade. And all the tutorials are in the old code. <laughs> the EOS Elemental Battles is still in the old, you know, code. Elemental Battles is a really, honestly, a great tutorial put out where in eight big steps, you create a game on EOS. You build the smart contract, or actually, I think you set up your environment first. You build the smart contract, you build a front end in uh, Node React, and you, you plug it all together and you have a little playable game I, I, honestly, it's kind of a dumb game. It's like rock, paper, scissors turned into fantasy cards. But uh, it's definitely a useful learning experience. And it, it's, it's, it's like kind a, of a cool learning experience rewriting it so that it's up to date, too. It's like a foundation to, to learn oh, further. Yeah. yeah, totally. But what happened was this this uh, tutorial came out right about a week or two before the San Francisco Hackathon. And then within that release and the hackathon itself, a uh, release candidate came out, like a new release candidate from Block 1 to update the whole software and it just broke everything. Is that what happened? I mean, so it's not, it's not like your old code suddenly didn't work. Uh, but your code that you wrote 
uh, uh, let me rephrase that. It's not like contracts you deployed to the blockchain stopped working. It's just that your old code that you wrote to compile, to deploy, like if you updated to the newest version of the development toolkit, mm -hmm. suddenly it didn't work at all. Like they introduced as many things that broke it as they could because they didn't want to break every release, you know? So they just broke that release and they broke everything. So the, pro great. the problem with that was right before Hackathon, like the goal of the hackathon is to bring in new developers, maybe <laughs> Ethereum developers or just non-blockchain developers who have a mild interest in this stuff to mm -hmm. come to the hackathon. So they're probably going through their tutorials. They hear great feedback on this tutorial. <laughs> and then obviously whenever you're uh, deploying your development environment, which we'll get into in a bit, in a little bit here, you want usually use the most recent release candidate. You're not using a beta. You're using like the, uh, the most recent production release mm -hmm. and that, didn't work. Yeah, I, everybody dealt with it. The changes aren't that drastic once you figure them out. Have and they, now they're much better documented than they were before. Developers portal, developers.eos.io is a great source. Um, but still, there could be more. I would love to see a really comprehensive video series, wink, wink, on developing EOS smart contracts. That, that'd be really useful. So you think a developer series would be useful for you know the general community? I think it would be useful for people who developed or programmed a little bit before and they want to learn how to program for EOS, yeah. I, I, I could get that tutorial in front of some people for you. You want to do really? them? If you want to do so them. So you'd like me to make them? Well, once we get our uh, game deployed okay. on the main net. So shush, you said it was a game. You're not supposed to say it was a game. Uh, well, <laughs> so I, I guess while the cat's out of the bag, you also have, you're very multifaceted. You have a gaming background also. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. I I, uh, I sold <laughs> translation and like story writing services to developers. So that took me to places like Paris Games Week, which is massive. China Joy, which is just more massive. GDC, you know, and uh, it, it, it's kind of all coming together now. You know, mm -hmm. like uh, into this. I don't know, technical content kind of package. And I, lo I love it. Isn't I think it it's crazy great. how like all of your life experiences all like mesh together somehow in blockchain. It's like all of these like crazy one thing from here you're using, one thing from there you're using, you put them all together and it like, you're just like this like ninja. It's, Isn't it's so it? true. Weird and I think it's out? cause like this ecosystem has economics and like game theory, like philosophy and that uh, technology and like, you know, all these um, investment, you know, like there's all these factors. So if you've come from a diverse background, you hit more, I guess you check more of those boxes, right? You're, mm -hmm. you're more knowledgeable as a whole about space, but yeah. Anyway, so, uh, I've, I've enjoyed developing on EOS and so I'd love to see more resources out there. How, how would you say thing? It sounds like from what you've told me that oh, since back in August, when you first, uh, launched your own test net, uh, things have continuously improved from, are, are you referring to what Block One has been publishing or from what the community has been publishing or a little bit of a mix of both? I mean, a mix of both. I think it's mostly the community, but yeah, definitely a mix of both. You know that Block One after the the uh, the June release kind of became less vocal for a while as they watched things unfold, um, but the community has really stepped up. There's stuff coming out that maybe we'll talk about from like EOS Canada and other BPs that are really helping developers scatter. Um, and uh, my own little favorite app right now is this EOS Studio app, which really nobody knows about. And I'm really excited to well, that, show it off. That's why we brought you here, because typically I, I do these shows with Rob and we, we cover what, what's going on in the EOS ecosystem. And it's mostly... Very surface level, but not very technical. And we give a lot of shout outs to different projects that are building really cool things. But it's really hard for me or Rob to explain these developer tools that are coming out and the teams behind them are putting in a ton of work to, to make them happen. And I don't think they're getting the same publicity that some of these like cool game projects are getting through our show. Right. So I, I think it's uh, about time to kind of give some recognition to some of these software tools that have been coming out from great teams like what ES Canada, Scatter, who else? Oh, um, uh, ES Studio. Yeah, ES said. Studio. Uh, I, sometimes I don't know the team behind them. I don't even, I don't think there's a team like a BP behind EOS studio. Uh, maybe they're looking for one now. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So it used to be a, a trick to deploy your own environment. Gal and I have a <laughs> extensive history trying oh, to deploy oh environments, lo local development. You know, you want to, before you launch something on the EOS mainnet, you want to have like a little micro 
net EOS net on your computer where you can test things without, you know, ruining everyone's, Mm -hmm. uh, EOS holdings. So, uh, so anyway, it used to be a trick. Then Docker got involved. You can like download it and start it up, but there's still a bunch of like commands you have to enter. You're, you're working in the command line all the time. We're developers. We know how to do that, Mm -hmm. but the, it, it's great to have a tool and I'm going to show it to you here on the screen. It's great to have a tool that like lets you do that much more easily. Cause you're doing it all the time, you know, like you're deploying test nets and you're, you're sending actions and you're seeing what they do cause you're debugging your contract. Um, so yeah, right now it really is this easy. The, uh, this is EOS studio. You pick your version Wait, of wow. EOS. Yeah, go so ahead. EOS, okay. it's called EOS studio. Do you have the domain off the top of your head where people can find more information? Um, I would go to the Telegram. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny Telegram, um, because, like I said, very I, few. I mean, there's 51 yeah, members. 51, that's... There's 51 members in the EOS Studio Telegram, and uh, they they're moving pretty fast. I made a bunch of suggestions, mm-hmm. and they were in a week later, like in the in the next version. Um, so I'm excited to see where they go with it. But it's already what I use mm-hmm. to develop. Like it's, so it's for deploying new environments. You could local, yeah, jungle. Well, you can you can deploy like I'll net. show you, you. You know you can you can do a local net. You can do either of these test nets. They're going to support more uh, like side chains, sister mm-hmm. chains too. But I can go right on mainnet right now and like load the Pixel Master contract and uh, you know pick an account or import an account and just like run things in Pixel Master. But like I can do this with my own contracts too before they're deployed on a local net. So basically what this tool does, it eliminates a lot of the repetitive tasks that you gotta oh, yeah, do totally. over and over and over again. Like here, so you... watch, I'll spin up a local environment. Ready? Click. Oh. Node Node EOS V1. This is no internet connection is a bug. Node EOS 1.5.2 is running. There it is. It's running. I go to it and it's it's running. It's producing blocks. All I did was click. So and before you just like I said, your terminal window, how, like how many lines you just oh you had, to, you had to do downloads. You I had know, to like, I remember your debug deployment things. instructions at ICO. Or was it more more steps than that? No, it was it was definitely fewer steps than that. <laughs> um, and I'm not saying it was impossible. It's just way easier now to just deploy it, and then you can. You know, you, you just take a contract, like I wrote this little Everything EOS contract, and uh, it just collects usernames, and you build it, and it says building contract, and it builds right there. Um, it's still flexible. You still got the settings you need, but you just click build, and it's done. You don't have to go into terminal and enter a bunch of commands and things. It's it's great. It streamlines everything. So as you're developing a decentralized application on, on EOS, whether it's the main net or a test net, how many times do you got to redeploy your environment like that throughout your entire like life cycle of the project? I I redeploy fairly frequently because I want to start from a like a totally clean slate. What about when the updates come out? We talked about the release candidate earlier. So if a release comes out, you got to Oh yeah, yeah. Everything. Well, you see this is 152, but I when I click add, I have all these options. Mm. I can I can download any of these. I run on 152 right now. Okay. Um but yeah, it's just it's right here. Um let me talk real quick about this. You know like the web is built on data. You're a data guy, or at least mm-hmm. you were a data guy, right? <laughs> Um, you pretended to be a data guy, maybe. Like, I could parse a SQL database like the best of them. I can parse a SQL database in three point seven seconds. I can JavaScript sometimes <laughs> with the right with the right set of googling and the right keywords. Well, there you go. <laughs> maybe that's why but, we don't have so many good smart contract but, developers because there's no googling for. We're a talking lot of about this deploying yet. contracts here. I've never deployed a contract myself, but I've deployed plenty of environments, and it's a pain in the ass no matter what you're using yeah, yeah, whether yeah. it's blo- blockchain or not like sometimes just getting your database to talk to your server and like query it correctly and then whitelist yeah it's a pain in the ass yeah yeah totally um but this is super easy this is easier than any of our uh local environments we've ever set up yeah at, i mean they've done jobs. the work like i said there's still settings in here that like all these these command line settings you can still do everything you can from command line if you need to but Normally, just a start button. So do you think that there's a lot of people dipping their toes into EOS development and they just don't know about these tools and they're wasting their time by doing it like through the terminal window? Um, or do you think most people know about this? Well, no, no. I don't think anybody knows about this. Their Telegram has 50 people. I, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> and Compared... one of them's you and you're not developing smart contracts. No, I just like to be in every Telegram channel. Um, so anyway, yeah. Great tool, EOS Studio. Like you said, um, I mean, there's an EOS developer telegram. It's got 8,000 people and they're trying. And some of the questions there are really rudimentary, but I think everyone should learn the command line stuff Mm -hmm. um, to understand how it's going on. 
but you don't want to have to do the same like routine set of things. Like I got to spin up a, a node locally. I got to set up Clio. So I got to create a wallet and remember the password. I got to create accounts. I got to deploy the contract. I got to, you know, push the actions. I got to check the tables, you know, like it, you well, should know how to do that, but this makes it easier. This is a big reason um, why Dan Larimer actually created EOS as a general purpose protocol. Right. Because he, he had already built two uh, scalable, successful blockchains with BitShares and Steam it, or Steam. And both of those blockchains were very good at a very specific thing. BitShares mm -hmm. with being a DEX and Steam it with being a, a social media platform where you could earn value through, mm -hmm. through creating exactly. content. But through building those two protocols, he saw these repetitive steps. Every time I want to deploy a brand new blockchain, I got to do X, Y, Z. Right. And that, that, that might take months to do yeah. it from scratch. <laughs> so what he wanted to do whenever he came up with the concept of EOS is I want to build something to utilize my experience with these past projects so that I could create a Steemit or a bit shares on top of EOS without having to do all that boring, repetitive stuff at the beginning. It, it's like you're already getting a head start to what you want to do. And that's cr create your, your, your masterpiece, whatever it is, whatever it is you're trying to build, you can just jump into building that instead of having to lay down the foundations of building like a blockchain from scratch. Yeah. Yeah, totally. By the way, when steam at 2.0 soon, soon, I have oh, no come idea. On. I thought I'd get the I, inside scoop. I, I have no inside scoop. I, I, I think, I don't know, man. I don't want to give, I, I don't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. So there's, yeah, EOS2 is great. There's some other great tools out there. Uh, I'll, I'd shout out to EOS Canada for their work on Defuse. Um, it lets you do things like stream the data for tables to your app so that you don't have to keep getting it over and over again, you know, just like real time updates of what's going on. So an example of this, I think we talked about it before we started recording, like everyone's used to so their social media feeds, you're scrolling through your timeline. And in real time, you see like a heart, like appear, mm -hmm. a, a ticker on a tweet increased by like three or a view, a view count on YouTube, for instance, that's all happening. Like YouTube or Twitter or Facebook isn't calling the server constantly. It, it gets, it, it's like a, a stream. But that, that's like what people are used to with like current technology. Like for right. it, it, it all comes down to UX and UI. And that's where I think we could all agree uh, blockchain as a whole, the, these decentralized applications we've seen up until this point, especially before EOS, they've been lacking because you can't have the same functionality that you can on a centralized database, like right. when using Twitter or Facebook. So as like our, our end game here is to reach some sort of mass adoption. And if the tools that we're building on EOS or any other blockchain, if they're not better than what we're using now, if, it, if, if whatever decentralized Twitter I'm using is slow and like not nearly as good as the Twitter I'm used to, I'm never even going to install it. So like this stuff just wasn't possible before Defuse. Well, I mean, yeah, it was possible, but Defuse makes it easier because it's already built. You can go and use the API. You know what I'm saying? You don't, not every app has to go and deploy their own solutions for this stuff. So um, that that's what you're saying is yeah. it was being done before, but everyone had to build sure. it themselves. I mean, you remember Bet Dice was getting like live dice going. You could do mm -hmm. a live feed somehow. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. but it's now it's much easier. So and uh, I know there's more things coming out of Defuse too soon. Definitely a cool thing for developers. That reminds me, another thing that's cool is both EOS New York and Scatter announced initiatives, I haven't looked into them too much, to allow uh, apps to integrate with basically all the wallets in one go, mm -hmm. rather than like, oh, well, we'll integrate with Scatter first, and then EOS Links, and then we'll integrate with Gray Mass, and then we'll, and uh, that's cool. That's a cool development as well. Was um, Hasn't Scatter already been integrated with a lot of the wallets before though? I know they put out an update and they, they got I think more support, but weren't they already supporting a lot of they? I think they just I added didn't know that. Links. I mean, maybe I didn't know that. I'm, I'm not. Oh, sure. Oh, you're right. You're right. Their uh, their blog post said stuff like uh, they're already integrated with Token Pocket, yeah. Meet One, Pocket EOS, Nova. Okay. But they added right. more, I think. Yeah, they did. They good. added Links Wallet plugin, which is a big deal. Yeah, that Link. I love Links. Links and Meet One, I think, are two really good wallets. Until uh, I haven't tried Token Pocket yet. A lot of people uh, talk about that one because they have the um, 
the candy on there. You get these airdrops. Yeah, yeah. Pra candy box. Or I, I don't do candy box. <laughs> um, so yeah, those are, those are some of the great tools. Uh, more are coming out. I know that. I mean, I know some block producers producing tools they haven't announced yet uh, that are really interesting. And you don't uh, name any names? You don't have to name the tool. I, I don't want to name any names. No. Do you have private secret conversations outside of the public view that you know something that I don't? Maybe. I may have a consulting call coming up soon That's awesome. about a secret tool coming out. Cool. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, this, so this is, it's great. The community is growing. Uh, it's getting easier and easier to build dApps, which I think it's overblown how difficult it is, especially when you can update things. Um, as long as you're careful, you know about the vulnerabilities and you put in things like the ability to freeze your contract and things mm -hmm. like that uh, in case something goes wrong, you limit the funds in the contract. Maybe you have some kind of insurance set up. Uh, it's, it's doable to deploy applications on EOS. It's something that developers out there, whether they developed in the past or develop now, should consider checking out. So we've talked about some cool tools, EOS Studio and Defuse from EOS Canada, which, by the way, the... the um, I'm not sure if it's the CTO or the CEO of ES Canada. He's also a pianist. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I told you that we, whenever yeah. I first found out. Josh from Canada told me that. And right. It was coincidental that two pianists. We got a, we got a dueling pianos out here. Remember yeah. when we were uh, in Georgia and you were playing the piano and all the people were standing around you at the restaurant? <laughs> like you're Beethoven? That was the greatest. Evan, <laughs> Evan comes up. It's late at night. And, uh, you know, I'm playing the piano. I'm playing like trying to make Mario appropriate for the restaurant and stuff like that. You knew every and, uh, video game theme song. If you ever grew up like playing regular Nintendo, oh, Street like, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, he knew <laughs> every single song in the piano, <laughs> every gaming song. And then he would mix them up, he'd, like be like a DJ. Right, 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 right. That's not the story. Right. Um, so I'm playing and, uh, you know, everyone at ICO Alerts just kind of annoying some music. And, uh, but it's late and it's in a hotel. And so this guy comes over and he marches over. He's in a suit. He's clearly with the hotel mm -hmm. with the name badge. And he is intent on shutting me down. He's going to come over and be like, sir, you can't play the piano right now. Evan steps in his way. Like, I mean, football maneuver, man, mm -hmm. just like intercepts the guy. And he's like, whoever you got for the piano here, he's, he's great. All mm -hmm. these people are so happy that you got this pianist tonight to play right now. All these guests love <laughs> this pianist. And so, and so the guy backed down and said, oh can you please play a little quieter? <laughs> and that was it. I was, I, well, you, know, you got to figure, <laughs> so th funny. this guy is just some security guy. He probably doesn't know good music from bad music. He's used to <laughs> jackasses like me playing on the piano, not knowing what the hell they're doing. He probably doesn't know the Super Mario theme song. So he's like, what the hell is this? But you're playing like good other, like, more complicated stuff too. Well, anyway, anyway. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So I'd really love to to duel pianos with uh, with Alex from EOS Canada sometime. <laughs> how, you know how you, you met Mark, right? When yeah, we yeah. Here. I met Mark briefly. He, um, he's not the pianist. I think it is Alex. He's the CTO. I think. I'm not sure. So the tools that that you like is Defuse. You really like Defuse, and you really like EOS Studio. And you yeah, and like, I, I love that the new wallet integrations. Yeah, that's the other thing we mentioned. Newer. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people know about, I, I think they know about Defuse. Or mm -hmm. their, so, their social media channels are much uh, more popular. It's EOS Canada promoting it. They've been a top 21 block producer almost the entire time. Well, yeah, they did EOS BIOS, right? They were like, they yeah. literally built what we they're, used to start the EOS mainnet. They're known for being a technical team, but the EOS Studio team, I'm, I'm not sure who's behind that team, if it's block producers or just independent devs. But and, uh, by the way, we didn't get compensated. I didn't get compensated no. at all to, to pro put this out there. And EOS Studio is free. I, d I don't <laughs> know how they're going to monetize or anything. You just go download it. As far as tools or releases that are public, which are there any that stand out that you're kind of waiting for? Um, I, I don't know what work has been done on this right now, but we're all waiting for a great like debugger for EOS. Um, right now, what you do is you you put lines in your code that print things. Mm -hmm. So basically, the code does something, and then it prints a statement that says, I've just done this. And then it prints so a like statement a, that says, I've just done this, like so that you know what it did log? last. Yeah, basically. Um, but you have to, you have to, you know, you write you write all these things, and that's that's fine. But mm -hmm. that's not really, like, that's not, that's not as robust as we would like, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I can't wait for something like a debugger to come out. Do you think that's something that will come from the community or do you think it should come from block one? Uh, hmm. what, what, I don't know. What, what are your expectations as a developer from block one? Do you think they have any obligation to, to support 
you with tools and what tools do you like would you request if they were listening i mean i think it's in block to, block one's uh interest to I you know think provide so good I mean, tools I, support good tools because they you know they want everyone to build on these platforms and people like me they're not following all of this these platform. uh dev- I, I keep reading about the developer portal they're hiring people for content writing in the developer mm-hmm. por- portal and developer relations so you could testify that or attest to that things are getting better from block oh one. yeah 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 definitely the developer portal has been is now up to date um there's more things going on more examples you know just because i'm saying we're not there yet mm-hmm. doesn't mean that nothing's been done it's yeah. we're, we're getting there we're getting there so, so is is there anything else that's not out there yet maybe even not even talked about that is like some gem that you're really looking forward to coming out one day to really like accelerate like what you're able to build for uh, our, our specific use case with what we're kind of building as a team well this is a little longer term and uh I think that it'd be really interesting to see someone working on trustless custodianship between, you know, across blockchains. Mm-hmm. Right now we've got, what is it? Uh, what's what's Bit BetDice Pi. is called? BitPi. So, BitPi, BitPi. Um, but, you know, you're still trusting, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, uh, There might be multi-sig, so, but we don't know how many parties there are and they're not like voted in or anything. Th- that so. helps. And I, I don't think that we can reach a world where absolutely everything is always mm-hmm. trustless. No. You know, people are trusting us by listening to us. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but um, but I would really love to see some movement in that area. And But as far as developer tools, I think we're on the right path, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I, th- I think that we're doing a great job building out the community and helping people out. I still have a bug with uh, our little game contract that I haven't been able to figure out and the developer's telegram hasn't been able to figure out either. Um, But, uh, you know, we'll get past that stuff. Uh, And, you know, hey, so head back down and code. I'm going to be coding all weekend. (laughs) You're not going to hear from me. Uh, That's it. Are you going to be putting out any podcasts anytime soon or are you mostly just programming right now? Um, I'm doing this week uh, a new one and then... uh, Christian Amir from uh, Sustainy Capital has been really hitting me up trying to do a security token <laughs> uh, thing. He's a really smart guy. And so we're going to do an interview soon. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to get back into that too. Cool. Well, I mean, I, I know time's probably uh, your biggest limitation with putting out online content. So mm-hmm. I could obviously help through this channel. I'll do all the post-production post this for you. Whoa, that, so you big do, offer. So, it's yeah. on record. So no matter how much content I produce, no, you'll do there, all there the post. I mean, I, this, this is evergreen. <laughs> uh, what, what's today's date we're recording this? We're recording yeah. this on Tuesday, January 15th. Hopefully this comes out in January, but our goal is to make it evergreen because I have stuff but, uh, <laughs> have a archive of content i highly i'll put the links in the description but if you're going to listen to one of his podcasts i highly recommend the universal resource inheritance one because it completely you, you do such a good job of explaining a very complex subject that most people were against at first and you're able to just make them think and like maybe think about their own like decisions on their previous opinions and i think that's, that's all i want you know i you're not going to convince everybody and i've had people come up and say Hey, I really enjoyed that episode, even though I disagree. Mm-hmm. You know, that's great. I, I love opening dialogue like that. Um, so I, if I could help with you being able to break down complex subjects like development on EOS, and we could help the EOS community because of that, if you could break down that complex subject and simplify it, I, th- I think that'd be great for everyone. Sweet. So maybe uh, EOS development tutorials coming out soon, if you guys want them. Yeah, let us know in the comments, Twitter, uh, our Telegram channel. Let me plug that, everything EOS. Also, join the EOS Studio Telegram channel, <laughs> please. It's like crickets in there. Uh, every T.me front slash everything underscore EOS. Um, I guess that about wraps it up today. Stay frosty. We got. I, I usually say I'm Zach Gall, and you got to be like I'm Peter K. No, oh, we, we, okay, we could fine. do it different. How do we He's wanna, Zach Gall, we, and I'm Peter K. How and do, this. How do, you want to do it? <laughs> Go for it. He's Zach Gall. I am. I'm Peter K. Yeah. And this was everything he has. Wait.